Hi, in this video today we're going to have a look at geometric sequences. So in the last video we were talking about arithmetic sequences where each term in the sequence we got by adding on to the previous term and adding on the same amount each time. So as a contrast to that we have geometric sequences where each term is found by multiplying the previous term by the same number. So in the arithmetic sequences we were adding on d each time for geometric sequences, we're going to multiply each time, and the number that we're multiplying by each time is called R. Okay, so that's the letter that we use, R, and it's called the common ratio. So you see in my example here, we've got a geometric sequence starting with 3. So A equals 3. We use the same letter as we do for arithmetic sequences. And we're multiplying each term by 2 to get the next term. So we say R equals 2. And once again, we use n for the number of terms in the sequence. So our first term is a, our second term is a times r. Our third term in the sequence is a times r times r again, which is a r squared, so on and so on. You can see the pattern here that the fifth term in the sequence is a r to the power of 4. The fourth term in the sequence, a r to the power of 3. So the power is always one less than the term number. So that leads to this formula here. This is the nth term for a geometric sequence. Un is just telling us which term in the sequence. A, R to the power of n minus 1. A, the first term. R, the common ratio. N, the number of terms. This formula, once again, is given to you. The formula for the sum of n terms is this. I won't derive it here. It's a little bit tricky, but uh, if you have a textbook, it'll probably have how you get this formula. It's given to you on the formula sheet. If the value of r is between minus 1 and 1, the geometric sequence has what we call a sum to infinity. That is, it doesn't matter how many terms you add up in the sequence, it doesn't go past a certain number, and I'll illustrate that soon. So just to illustrate the sum to infinity for a geometric sequence, suppose we have a 2 meter length of string. We cut it in half. So we've got two lengths of one meter each. We then leave one half alone and we cut the second in half again. So we've got one meter, then half a meter and half a meter. Then we cut the half a meter in half again, so on and so on. And we repeat the process again and again and again and again. Okay. So it doesn't matter how many times we repeat the process, we've only ever got two meters of string to, to start with. Okay, this sequence up here has a sum to infinity, in other words. That sum, a half, one plus a half plus a quarter plus one eighth plus one sixteenth plus one over thirty-two, you can see each fraction is getting half as big as the last one, must add up to two eventually. It doesn't matter how many turns we take. Okay, that's a hard thing to get your head around that this sequence of numbers with infinitely many terms has a limiting value. So that's the sum to infinity. It's an example of an infinite series. Okay, so this is a geometric progression with a equals one and r equals a half. So if you looked at the sum, you can see also in a diagram, after one term, the sum is just one. Up to two terms, we've got one plus a half, so one and a half, etc., etc. You can see it's heading towards two, but it never quite gets there. Okay, so if we use the formula that I showed you before for the sum of n terms, put all their numbers in, a equals one, r equals a half. When n gets really, really, really big, a half to the power of n gets really, really close to zero. Okay, so as n tends to infinity, a half to the n tends to zero, and so the sum to infinity, if that's to zero, we just get a over 1 minus r. So for that sequence, a over 1 minus r is 2, which is the correct answer. <clears throat> if we have r equals 2, it doesn't work. Uh, the, sum, the, the sequence doesn't have a sum to infinity because 2 to the power of n tends to infinity as n tends to infinity. So this only works 
when the values of r are between minus 1 and 1. Okay, that's the only time the sequence has a sum to infinity. In this example, we've got a equals 2. Now, what's the value of r? What are we timesing each term by to get the next term? It's obviously negative because the terms are changing signs. So, like anything, to get the nth term, or to get the value of r, sorry, we just go this value divided by this value. So, negative a half divided by 2, which is negative a quarter. So, in this case, r is negative a quarter. So, our sum to infinity, a over 1 minus r is 1.6. So for this geometric sequence, we want to know the sixth term, the sum of the six terms, and the sum to infinity. So as for arithmetic sequences, I encourage you to write down all the things that you know. So here, a equals 54. R, ah, the common ratio, is just any term divided by the term before it. So 36 divided by 54, or 24 divided by 36. In each case, if you simplify those fractions, you get two-thirds. So each term is two-thirds of the previous term. So you can see as we go further and further along here, the terms are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So the sixth term using the formula a r to the n minus 1 is 7 and 1 ninth. The sum of the first six terms using that formula on the formula sheet is 147 and 7 ninths, or 148 to 3 sig figs. And the sum to infinity, a over 1 minus r, is 162. So it doesn't matter how many terms we add up, millions and millions and millions, we'll, and keep adding them up, we'll never get past 162. In this example, we're given the second term and the fifth term, and you can see how I've written it out. The second term, 9, the fifth term, 1 and 1 eighth. Drawing it out like this really helps me. We want to find the sum to infinity of the sequence. So... I can see to go from 9 to 1 and 1 eighth, I've had to multiply by r three times. So I could write 9 times r cubed equals 1 and 1 eighth. Dividing both sides by 9 gives me r cubed is 1 eighth, so r is equal to a half, the cube root of 1 eighth. So each term is half of the, uh, the previous term. That allows me to find the first term. This term here must have been 18. Okay, 18 times a half gives me 9. So I've got A, I've got R, I can work out the sum to infinity. Another method for finding this is just forming two equations and solving simultaneously. The second term is 9, so A times R is 9. The fifth term is 1 and 1 eighth, so AR to the 4 is 1 and 1 eighth. Dividing those two equations, the A is cancelled, and it gives me R cubed equals 1 eighth. And we go from there. So the sum to infinity, a over 1 minus r, is 36. Every problem that we try in these sequences is slightly different from the last one. The ones in this exam will be different from the ones in other exams, but you can get the idea of how to do them by always writing down what you're given, trying to choose the correct formula to use. Uh, that's two major hints I could give you. Also, just recognize that we're only talking about two kinds of sequences here, arithmetic and geometric. There are other kinds. Just because a sequence isn't one or the other uh, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So there is other kinds of sequences that follow rules. These are just two particular kinds of sequences.